How's it going guys and gals? Today we're looking at a gun that I'm really excited about. This is a gun that's used for 10 meter competition, which is something that guys and girls can do. So I'm going to show you this gun. We're going to do the usual. As well, we'll go over some of the rules of the 10 meter competitions, how that works, and what exactly that's all about. First off, here's some hardcore stats. This is a PCP rifle. Operates off 3000 PSI or 200 bar. Now it's only shooting at 580 feet per second. So you're going to get over 300 shots per fill. Okay. Also, this is regulated. So it's going to be very accurate. Obviously, it's a 10 meter competition gun. 177 caliber only. That's what 10 meter is. It's got a reversible side lever. Wow. So the side lever is sweet, but I did not realize that. You can change it from right to left. It's got a floating Lothar Walther barrel. Another thing I did not know. Lothar Walther barrel, very nice. Fully adjustable synthetic stock. Two-stage match grade trigger with adjustable shoe. It meets the requirements for national standard three-position air rifle. So we'll figure out what that is. It has a hooded front aperture sight. Diopter rear sight with micro-click adjustments. Yeah, wait till you see this sight in the rear. It is quite a package you got back there. It's a precision instrument for sure. And the cool thing about this gun is that you're not putting a heavy scope on it, so it's really lightweight. But it does have an 11 millimeter dovetail optics rail, so to find the exact pellet for it, I am going to throw a scope on here. It has a bottom accessory slot. You can attach a pick rail if you want, slide it forward and back, and you can use a bipod there or a foregrip. But of course, if you're going to be using this for competition or practicing, you got the hamster, which they give you, and you'll be able to slide that forward and backwards. Speaking of the hamster, it says it's a precision adjustable sliding fore-end hand rest. Precision adjustable rubber butt pad. The butt pad actually goes up and down too. Adjustable cheek piece and an integrated manometer. It's quiet, a number two on the loudness scale or low medium. It's suggested for competition, manual safety. It weighs exactly seven pounds. It's got an overall length of 40.75 inches. It says the maximum shots per fill is 350. Side lever action. The cocking effort is 11 pounds. It's a single shot. And once again, it shoots about 580 feet per second or about six foot pounds. By the way, the power is fixed. It's not adjustable. So obviously this gun's gonna be like tuned to perfection. So I just have to figure out which pellet to shoot. So here's what I have for pellets. I have exploding pellets. And then these are the ones, I'm probably going to use one of these. Now we have various weight wad cutters. And I guess these are match for matches. We got good old Crossman Premiers. And then some traditional lightweight domed pellets. So... These are all between seven and eight grains. And then over here, we have heavier pellets that are made for more high power guns. So these are all 10.34 right here. And then we got 13.73, 13.43 redesigns, and 16.2 grains. So once again, we're probably not gonna be using any of these. Definitely gonna be using one of these. Here's a close-up look at this beautiful gun. As you can see, it's got the same stock as a semi-auto Marauder. It's got a beautiful charging handle, smooth cocking, which we'll go over in a second. The two-stage trigger is perfect. We'll also take a look at that. Get your fire and safe underneath if you happen to forget. There's your funky fresh foregrip, and it fits my hand perfectly. Nice and flat for bench rest shooting as well. We got the cutout styling, and there's a look at those numbers. This is an awesome looking gun especially when I put a scope on it. This charging handle is just smooth. Just like that to decock it. That's your safety right there. Decock it, you're just gonna pull this back, let it down gently, and now it's decocked. Beautiful. There's your manometer. Looks like it's gonna be running off 200 bar or 3000 PSI. Got your barrel coming straight out the receiver, Olympic style, going through an uh, aluminum barrel band right there, and I'm guessing there's a fill port under there, 
and this is for your front sight nice little weight right there very stylish and back here just like uh, on the semi-auto marauder I believe it was maybe a little different but you got this is adjustable for length of pull so you can pull that out a couple inches and do your cheek piece up and down this gun's super light with uh, these allen keys right here these are aluminum right here and then you got a nice soft rubber butt pad right there very nice I did have to use a straw to get my crown saver down the 177 caliber barrel the barrel ends a few inches short of that muzzle weight so I was cleaning the air gun like I always do with balisol and a flexible cleaning rod and when I pulled my patch through I got a little bit of a surprise well that's a first that appears to be squeaky clean so uh, that's cleaner than most guns though there's definitely not a bunch of motor oil in it so that's cool I pulled a few patches to dry it but this is cleaner than most guns after I clean them yes that is a first on air gun channel there was absolutely no gunk inside that barrel and we can't really tell but that is a hundred percent clean my third patch and that's this was a tight one that was pulled uh, really tight in the barrel two patches this thing's ready to rock and roll so right here I'm in my super secret indoor shooting range so it actually goes 17 yards but I set up a nice 10 meter target going for 10 yards and it's super fun to be able to shoot at night and also with no wind so when the Sun goes down it's a lot of fun to be able to do any time of the day I ended up getting 11 yards which is close enough here's how you put the front sight in and what is funny is that I'm using a scope right now but I could have done every shot in this video with the sights that came on this gun and you guys will see what I'm talking about in the last segment of this video single shot loading 7.33 round nose rally sports these are the smallest bullseyes I got these things are making bullseyes disappear do a five shot group both eyes open on this one Sorry, I'm like in the utility room, so I got water heaters and appliances going off behind me. A little noisy, but... Wow, same hole in it. Like, effortless, too. Like, super smooth. Alright, now we have 7.33, but these are flat nose wad cutters. So let's see how they do. Now I got 300 shots per fill, so I ain't tripping on my air. We got another 295 to go. Now, fifth shot, I'm just going to put through that hole. All right, that was the 7.33 wad cutters. Now, we're going to do some 7.4 Crossman Premiers. Now, just think of what you could do to GI Joe heads at 10 yards away or anything the size of G.I. Joe's head actually anything the size of a 177 caliber pellet is in trouble this is great shooting practice because I'm able to sit here with both of my eyes open no nervousness no wind really gets you used to doing your fundamentals you could practice your breathing same hole in it and these are with pellets that cost about under ten dollars nice I wasn't really concentrating on that last one some more round nose pellets these are 7.87 grain JSB Express great to be able to sit here and shoot all night too and now have it to fill your air up fill up and you got 300 shots beautiful that was a 7.87 now it's time for the eights we have a uh, 8.02 grain wad cutters flat nose I 
may have bent that pellet. If I did, it did not hurt it. Wow, loving those. So all these match pellets are very good. So that was the uh, 8.02. Now we're gonna do the 8.26. And these are also wad cutter match pellets. I believe these are, these flatheads are the ones that are specifically designed for 10 meter. Nice, that was probably me on that last one, but that was going through the same hole. Okay, last one, 8.44 grain, round nose. These are just your straight up JSB exact pellets, 8.44 grain. These are the ones everybody uses for everything. All right, so we know that once we start shooting this gun freehand that if it's missing the bullseye, it's me and not the gun. Okay, I think we've proven that. But yeah, look at that. Five through one hole through the center of the bullseye. All these groups were good. But then look at this group with the heavyweight wad cutters. 8.26 grain. Five shots through one, one seven caliber hole. Pretty amazing. So the top of this bad boy is basically like a single shot tray, permanently in there. You just pull your probe back like that, drop in a Crossman Premier. You do have to watch, make sure it's going the right way, and you're all set. You should never leave your gun loaded, but let's just say you wanted to decock it, like when you're storing it. You just grab the charging handle, pull the trigger, and let it down gently. And now we're decocked. The way the trigger pull comes in at just 7.7 .7 ounces. Once again, here's that super smooth cocking right here. And the trigger pull, look at that beauty right there. You can adjust this shoe to, you know, up or down, or some people like to tilt it towards their finger. Yeah, it's smooth first stage and then feels as good as any fine trigger all right sound test on this bad boy definitely quiet but let's get an official reading here that's quiet all right I kept the scope on this gun for when I was dispensing justice but that's because I didn't realize how easy it was to shoot with the diopter sight so although we're making some really good shots on these tiny targets you can see how tiny these little figures are compared to a Skittle right there. As well, they have tiny little firearms. Even the silhouette targets had guns. So obviously I was pretty scared, but I knew my crossman challenger could handle the job. And then right here, I was just reciting in for my favorite pellet, but I started putting shots through the tin rings and it was so fun, I just couldn't stop. There's actually a pellet sized ring right there. I'm just gonna go like one click over. Oh, okay, so yeah, we might have to come up again. Sometimes when you go right to left, you'll go high or low again as well. Yep, all right, looking good. So I'm gonna come down. <laughs> That's how it's done. Man, this gun is so fun. I discovered something that I love and it's 10 meter with a scope. It's a new sport invented by Nate. Whoa, that is crazy. Let's do it again. At this point, I started clicking the crosshairs around, which I shouldn't have been doing. Whoops. And then right here, I got dialed back in. Check this out. There we go, we're back on zero. Oh, that was me. Yeah, boy, when you get it right, you get it right with this one. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's gotta be one of the coolest things I've ever done. With accuracy like that, these nefarious Nellies don't stand a chance. So there's definitely something weird going on here. We have multiple armed subjects and we're gonna take care of them. Check this out. That's a dime and a skittle just to show you how small these targets are. And it looks like even the uh, silhouette targets are armed. So yeah, this does not look good you guys. Fortunately, we got our crossman, Challenger. And I think we can take care of these guys, or gals, I should say. Before you guys say, what the heck, Nate, you know, because you don't usually shoot at ladies. These are professional stunt women, okay? And this is after I shot them. They're totally fine. They can take a lot more than six foot pounds. As you can see, the stunt women are fine. This dime took a direct hit, and it's way worse off than any of those little stunt ladies. Thing exploded. Oh no! Afraid that might happen. You guys, she didn't drop her gun. <laughs> Badass. All right, I glued her back on. So. Want to disarm everybody first? Subject disarmed. <laughs> Expertly done. Now let's see if we can get two sores at once on these chickens. We sure as heck did. That was awesome. Let's see if we can disarm this girl without losing the skittle. Nice. Oh. Skittle off the head time. Let's disarm the chicken real fast. So you can shoot her hair off. <laughs> Dusted that one. Shattered Skittles. I've been shooting the barrels of these guns. I haven't missed one yet. Let's see if we can get the head to separate. She definitely went skyward. I think I bounced her off the ceiling. All righty, Rue. We got the Crossman Challenger out here. I'm going to go ahead. If you guys are wondering the speeds on these pellets, here we go. Be sure and click on my sub MOA challenge video. It's real short and it's got the M3 in there. The other thing I want to tell you guys is these pieces are all aluminum, like I said before. And the length of pull, that's an extra long one that they include. I'm going to go ahead and put my diopter sight on in a second right here. Looks like you don't need anything but like a quarter to tighten that on there. These are just going to be, I'm guessing, hand click adjustments for right, left, up, and down. Of course, you're going to be looking through that little hole right there. Looks like you got a little hash mark right there to let tell you where you're at. That's awesome. As well, they have a nice thing right here that tells you all kinds of stuff. So real quick, this little plastic thing right here is actually on the side right here, which it looks like it's got its own little adjustment meter right there. You're supposed to slip this in like this, and then that blocks your other eye if that helps you. 
you're gonna get four of these guys right here and they are rotatable sight blades for the front sight. Those numbers right there are different size holes. As well, you're gonna end up with four of these. I have the 3.8 installed right now, but those are fixed sight blades for the front sight. Once again, to install the sight, you just loosen that, pull the blade in and out, and then tighten it back up. All right, it's time to tune in my sights right here. 10 yards, nailed it. Check out what I'm seeing, you guys. Okay, so if I back up, where my cheek rest is, I see about, I could see just the outside ring of that target. Ooh, okay, we lost the focus. Yeah, so mine looks about right like that. Right about, right about, actually there's a little right, right about there. That's what I'm seeing. So you're gonna get one of these in every box. A Megalink ballistics test. So, maybe you guys can decipher this, look at that. That's a bunch of shots they took. 10 of them. And apparently they got a computer that can tell where it hits. And that's it right there. Pretty nice group. Although I'm about to shoot way better groups than that with open sights and outside. Same hole, open sights, nice. I was starting off with the crossmaring premieres. Now you guys threw that sight, line it up, everything. I can see I'm telling you, as good as a scope, okay? That's how clear it is. And so, uh, I just nailed that. We haven't sighted in or nothing. My first shot, that's cross from Premier. Okay, so I don't have to worry about being on the paper. I'm gonna sight in and uh, shoot some groups. It's not windy out here, but we're exactly 10 yards away. And I sunk two in the same hole, just right to the left of the bullseye. Same hole, open sights, open nice. Sight. Yep, we're coming over to the middle. So that's so a good test on the premieres. Now these are considered the lightweight match pellet, wad cutter flat nose. Through the same hole. All right, new bullseye. Gotta keep coming over though, so should be getting to the black. There we go. All right, let me go on a big bullseye and see what happens here. All right, I just came like five clicks up. There it is, bullseye territory. All right, let me hit one of these down here. Booyah. Same hole, pretty much. All right, now we're on to what's called middle weight. Still went through the same hole. I can't believe that we're doing this with open sights, you guys. This is crazy. I'm starting to get nervous, but you basically just make sure all your holes are lined up and pull the trigger. There's no recoil. Wow, this is amazing. This is outside with open sights doing as good as it did inside with a scope. All right, last one on this guy. I just gotta be careful not to rush. I'm just 8.26 grain. Now you guys, I'm having to concentrate on, you know, doing my, getting all my things lined up perfectly, but you do this after a while, you won't have to think about nothing. Just look through there and just concentrate probably on your center hole, which is the super easy one. I'm shooting fast now. Uh, I didn't even hear that hit the paper because it just went through the hole. That's so funny. All right, let's nail this run right in the center. So the ring around the outside, okay, that's actually has so much to do with your cheek weld. If you had your cheek weld right every single time, then that ring would just be perfect. And you hold your cheek weld there, 
and you line up that bullseye inside your little ring, which is just a perfect fit. This thing just goes through the same hole, <laughs> open sides. I, it's, I'm like so amazed right now. All right, I'm gonna call that. This is so crazy. Like literally, I'm going from pellet to pellet, and that's multiple shots through like <laughs> the same hole. Just to show you how small these quarter inch bullseyes are, these right here are, of course, dime-sized bullseyes. So that smaller one there is just the width of maybe two or three pellets. Check it out. There it is on top of a dime. So pretty small. All right. By the time I got to the end of editing this video, it was already too long. So I won't have time to go into the 10 meter rules. But I'll tell you, this is a capable gun. I think we've shown this is definitely accurate enough to hang in the 10 meter competition. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description where you can find out more about the different sports you can shoot with this gun. Going over to pyramidair.com and I really appreciate y'all tuning in. Till next time, happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.